Overnight, police arresting the man accused of shooting three Palestinian college students in Burlington, Vermont. The suspect, identified as 48-year-old Jason J. Eaton, was taken into custody near the shooting scene, located in front of Eaton's apartment building. Three college students of Palestinian descent were injured in a shooting in Burlington, Vermont on Saturday. And after a day of searching, the alleged perpetrator was luckily arrested. Now two were shot in their torsos and one in the lower extremities. Here are more details about how the shooting unfolded. Authorities say two of the victims were wearing Palestinian scarves called kefiyas while bowling over Thanksgiving break. They were reportedly speaking Arabic while returning to one of their relatives' homes when police say the suspect approached them and fired at least four rounds without saying a word, then ran off. Third victim with a cruiser to the hospital. Police say two are stable at the hospital. The third suffered more serious injuries. The victims, identified by their families as Tassin Ali Ahmed of Trinity College, Kinian Abdal Hamid, a student at Haverford College, and Hisham Awartani, a junior at Brown. Hisham Awartani's uncle tells the New York Times a bullet hit his nephew's spine and he lost feeling in the lower part of his body. Man, that is unbelievably tragic. Um, but Good luck on ABC News and showing me up in the pronunciation of the names of the victims here. Um, now the shooter, as we mentioned earlier, has been detained and has been identified as 48 year old Jason Eaton, who was apprehended on Sunday afternoon near the scene of the attack. Now at around 3.30 PM yesterday, ATF agents encountered Eaton as they were canvassing the shooting area and they detained him. When ATF agents approached Eaton, the suspect allegedly told them, quote, I've been waiting for you, end quote, according to a probable cause affidavit. You probably shouldn't say that if you're then going to plead not guilty, which is exactly what he did during his arraignment today. Nonetheless, authorities said Eaton lives in an apartment building in front of the shooting scene. And a search of his home uncovered evidence that gave investigators probable cause to believe that Mr. Eaton perpetrated the shooting. Now, during that same search, authorities recovered a 38 semi-automatic Ruger pistol. They also found a loaded magazine with five rounds inside his top dresser drawer. Um, they, the weapon was taken to an ATF ballistic, ballistics lab where experts are firing a comparison bullet to examine it against the bullets uh, recovered from the victims and shell casings recovered at the scene. So this full on investigation is taking place as we speak. And he has uh, pleaded not guilty and is being held without bond. So he can't uh, you know, pay bail and, and get out of there. Now, this is being thought of as a hate crime. I wanna be very clear, the investigation is ongoing. We do not know yet what he was motivated by. I get the suspicions, I, I get the motivations and the, and the feeling that this was motivated by hate. I can totally understand that. But I think that it would be irresponsible of me to say that this was definitely a hate crime. I have no idea and no one has any idea yet. You can have your suspicions, but you gotta at least wait to see what these investigations yield. Now, an attorney for the victim's families, Abed, Ayub said that he believes that these students were targeted in part because two of them were wearing traditional Palestinian scarves. The suspect walked up to them and shot them. They weren't robbed, they weren't mugged. It was a targeted shooting and a targeted crime, according to the victim's lawyer. But Burlington Police Chief John Murad doesn't want to rush to judgment saying, in this charged moment, no one can look at this incident and not suspect that it may have been a hate motivated crime. And I have already been in touch with federal investigators and prosecutorial partners to prepare for that if it's proven. The fact is that we don't we don't yet know as much as we want to know right now, but I urge the public to avoid making conclusions based on statements from uninvolved parties who know even less. Now, while we are uncertain about what motivated this terrible shooting, 
We do know what motivated the stabbing of a young Palestinian boy. He was stabbed 27 times in a targeted hate crime and he died as a result. And that was of course following the terror attacks that were committed by Hamas on October 7th. So there have already been hate crimes committed in the United States. And I wanna be clear, there have been anti-Semitic attacks as well, which are abhorrent, which should be absolutely condemned. And anyone who has any suspicion that someone they know is committing these types of attacks um, should be reporting them to the authorities. No one should be made unsafe here in the United States or anywhere uh, based off of the ongoing war in Gaza. But I wanna bring you in Waz and get your thoughts on you know, not just this story, but the ongoing hostilities that we've been seeing here in the US. Yeah, I mean, this this one kind of hits me pretty close to home um, as these young guys are, are young immigrants to our country, essentially trying to make something of themselves, trying to educate themselves, make their lives and their families better. I'm honestly reminded of the people in my family, my mother, my father, my aunts, my uncle um, who came to America seeking that same dream, um, that betterment of themselves. And so, yeah, this, this kind of hits pretty close to home for me. And, you know, it, it's started pretty early once the war broke out uh in Gaza and uh, with this you know sort of conflation of the acts that w- of the so-called Hamas terrorists with that of an entire people um in Palestine right uh this demonization and it was easy to be reminded of you know the the type of rhetoric we heard about Arabs and Muslims uh, after 9-11. Uh, it's honestly mirrors the exact same rhetoric, the exact same demonization. Um, and so I'm not surprised by any of that. Um, you know, obviously it's foolhardy to conflate the acts of, you know, Islamists and jihadists with every single Muslim built. We're talking billions of people walking the face of the earth. And what I would advise people, man, um, the folks that that demonize these people in public, uh, just know when they found it useful, they empowered those folks. Our government, the Israeli government, they empowered these Islamist jihadist groups when they found them to be useful. And <laughs> their prominence and relevance is a direct result of that. So that, that's, a, that's, that's what I would want folks to remember that you only know about these folks because they've been empowered by governments like ours and Israel. And also um, the idea that every single Muslim walk Walking the face of the earth should be targeted because there's some potential, you know, crazy, deranged, violent person is absurd. I totally agree. And, and you know, to add to that, there's another case. Uh, we haven't done a report on it, uh, mostly because there were so many conflicting reports when the story first broke. However, someone has been arrested in regard to uh, a physical altercation that took place as pro Palestinian protests were happening. So there's a pro Palestinian protest happening, and then there's a counter protest by supporters of Israel. And during that protest, there was a physical altercation between an elderly man supportive of Israel and someone on the Palestinian side, the Israeli man or the man supporting Israel, I should say, and I believe he is in fact Jewish, was pushed as a result of that altercation. He fell and suffered injuries. He later died as a result of those injuries. For a little while, no one got arrested for it because authorities didn't know if it was intentional or if there was some sort of accident. But someone has been arrested in that case. And so we'll see how that plays out and fill you guys in on that. But I just wanna warn everyone, look, the right to protest is real and we should respect everyone. Even if we disagree with what they're protesting about, okay? Using any type of physical violence, harassing people because you disagree with the message of the protesters is unacceptable, absolutely unacceptable. Putting your hands on anyone, unacceptable. Engaging in anti Semitism or Islamophobia, unacceptable. And so I just, I have no freaking patience for it whatsoever. And so we'll see how this story plays out. We'll see if the investigation yields any information about the motivation of the alleged perpetrator here. One other detail I'll share is that he allegedly approached these three Palestinian college students and shot them without saying a word. And that might make it even more difficult to prove that this was motivated by anti-Palestinian hate. But Again, 
as this story develops and as this investigation moves forward, we'll fill you in on any details that we learn. Thanks for watching. If you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for, of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.